two more important things about these loops. Uh, there are two special statements that you can use inside of loops for some finer control. Um, and these are break and continue. So this break statement is another reserved keyword for Python that's very special. Uh, and the break statement will tell Python to break the loop and continue on past to the for loop body. So what happens here is as soon as you encounter uh, and execute a break line, you will exit this for loop completely and go on to the rest of the code. No more looping whatsoever for that for loop. So here what happens is for i in range 6, range 6 is going to be the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so we start, we first assign i the first value in the sequence, which is 0. And we run the code. i is not equal to 3, so we don't execute the break line. And we print the number. Num is 0. We repeat again, going on. i gets assigned the next value in the sequence, which is 1. 1 is not equal to 3, so we go on to print num is 1. Then num is 2. Uh, but now the next number in the sequence is 3. So i will get assigned the value 3. And then because i is equal to 3, we enter this conditional, execute the body of the conditional, and we break. And break will immediately not execute the rest of this iteration, and it won't iterate any more for this for loop. So we won't continue on to 4 or 5. So we just go outside and print this, this line, the commedia finita. So this is how you exit a loop early. Uh, the other special word that I want you to know, special keyword here, is continue. So these two examples look very similar here. Just instead of break, I have continue. And continue will tell Python to end only the current iteration of the loop and just move on to the next value in the sequence. And so it's very convenient for when you have a sequence of some items and you want to skip the body of your, of your for loop, skip executing the body of your for loop only for certain items in the list. Uh, in the sequence. And so again, for i in range 6, our sequence is going to be 0 through 5 um, in, uh, by 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here, 0 you know, makes sense. We print 0, we print 1, we print 2. As soon as we get to 3, i is now equal to 3, and we continue. And this continue statement means do not execute the rest of the body. Go back and update i to the next value in the sequence, if there is one, and, and execute the body again with the next value. Um, so then we go on, and 3 doesn't get printed, but 4 and 5 do get printed. And only then is the sequence exhausted. And so we exit the for loop and print la comedia is infinita. Um, so I've been doing some live coding demos as we go. Let me quickly go back here and show one more thing. Um, another place where these for loops are handy is that before, the only way we could define repetition was by actually you know, repeating something in the code ourselves. Print, let's see. So maybe I'll print a line of 10 stars. So if I run my code here, I'll just clear this and run my code. Great, we get two lines of 10 stars. If you want four lines, if the user wanted you to print four lines, you'd have to go back and edit your code and run it again to get the four lines. Um, but now, because we can iterate uh, over a sequence and the sequence is defined by some variable, you can actually have the user tell you how many times you want the program to do something. And so we can take num repetitions equals int input many lines of stars. And then instead of actually copying this print line multiple times, we can use a for loop with a range going up to the number of repetitions the user asked us to do to print out that number of lines of stars. So how many lines of stars do I want? Say I want five lines. There we go. But I can run the same program without editing the source code. And I can give, whoops. I can run the same program and give two lines. And it'll print two. 
Or I could do 10 lines and it'll print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines. 